Bullwinkle used to say on the old Rocky and Bullwinkle show. And Mr. Know-It-All, your lesson for today is the origins of fly tying material. You can look this up in the dictionary. The old English word for angling referring to a hook. The uh, old English people. Now first I'll tell you just about all fly tying products come from the craft industry. Cottage industries. We haven't had cottages in the U.S. have we? We had cabins. So what that man would do, he'd steal his wife's sewing needle and they used such items as fur and feathers and they sewed that on to clothes, hats and things like that and sold to the rich people. Going way back to merry old England when people would say knife. Anyway, they take that iron hook. Steel didn't happen until 1803 when they learned how to take soft coal, coke, and dry it out. That's how come people were still used to saying iron. That's how come the railroads were called iron horse. They'd put an angle in it and they'd go fishing. They used cat gut, which was actually sheep gut. How they came up with the name cat, don't know. But anyway, they'd tie that leader right to it. Didn't have no stinking eyes on there. Now can you imagine keeping a fish on something like that when you go to feed your family? There's number one. Your threads? Well that's an easy one. Craft industry. Sewing. Now let's get into some more modern stuff. We're gonna work up towards some yarns. Pretty much same thing. Craft industry. Now we're going to get into one to come in, I believe, around the late 1800s. Chenille. Well, you ever see any fancy crust velvet outfits, dresses, robes, bedspreads? Here again, made for the rich. Nowadays, the same machines make it in fancy colors. The craft industry. And yeah, this is a little nuclear payback to all those fly shops and distributors. What are you tying with? Craft stuff? Now you can see one here that I had, micro eyes. And you can see some of these products all in those five slideshows that I had that the book publisher didn't come out with. This was braided, two millimeter eyes, I had in 1992, micro eyes. So you can see quite a few patterns that I tied with that. They no longer make that. I have some of that. That made an excellent caddis fly. You'd put that on the hook and you'd wrap dubbing or I got special yarns that I'd put down in there. Lost forever. Now if you want to make dubbing, first dubbins, you come along, shear it off. That was the first dubbins. Didn't matter on the fur. You're looking at fur trade, mountain men, trappers. You had three X's in a hat. They'd take the beaver pelts back east. They'd get the hair off of it, treated with arsenic, and your cowboys out west saw the three hat, three X's, couldn't read or write. They knew not to drink out of it because they'd come become mad as a hatter. Arsenic would drive them insane. Alrighty, now we're gonna get into bead chains. These, believe it or not, were made for mechanical means. They drove sprockets. Then, believe it or not, when we invented electricity, they were used pull chains with a little mechanical gear for lights. Toilet industry got them. Now you can get those up to about, oh, about a size 24 millimeter. They make fancy curtains out of them, plated in all different colors. Now here again, your bead chain is either for the most part, unless it's stainless steel, it's plated on brass or aluminum. Even the stainless steel does not have enough weight to turn over the counterweight of that hook. It's how you turn it on, uh, how you tie it onto your leader. Now when you get into leaders, extruded um, products, that's the same thing that any, just about any of these fibers are, going back to the thicker ones that were nylon. It's a messy, messy 
process. Those originally were started out for paintbrush bristles. bristles. Well, you can call that craft industry because they use that for painting, but you can also call that a hairy homeowner industry. Now, when you get into your foams, well, craft industry, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> they say your whole sheet like I'm using here for the backdrop for what you can get at a fly shop, you can get 10 sheets of that for what they sell you a couple sheets of this for. And this stick them doesn't work. Even those new ones they're coming out with, use either 77 or super glue with the brush. Believe me. Now, let's get into something else. We're going to go back there at about 1992. And there was a product out called Crystal Flash, all metallic. Well, I came out with one here that was iridescent. Got it from Hobbs Feather Company. Feather Company? Well, yeah, Mrs. Hobbs made 10 times more money selling feathers and stuff like this to the craft industry than they sold two fly tires. I called her up, asked her if I could market it under my own name. Sure. Within three months of having sent out samples, I got from a New Zealand di distributor the exact same trademark, this same material back, ripping off my name in less colors. That's how fast it goes around the world. Anyway, this stuff comes, it's a blending filament made for sewing, craft industry. They mix it with threads. Usually comes in about 6,000 yard or meter spools. Now at that same time, I had this one here, which is a flash with a filament. You can see them in the videos. Polar flare. Old address from Juno. Going back there, Polaris Flies came out with the name Polar. Now everyone uses it, even though my book was held up and I couldn't get that. Here again, this one here, which is real popular. Blending filament, same thing. They get film that's about 60 inches wide by about 6,000 yards or meters long, and they slit it to size. Now you're going to get into rubber legs. You can see those in the video. 92. Had them in separate, separate sizes. Craft industry. Remember day camp where you made lanyards and things like that? Alrighty, now we're going to get into some of my newer ones because now with the videos, people know I invented it. Sure, I'm going to get ripped off on a couple. That's the way they are. I use my imagination, the Almighty give me, to create fly patterns for y'all. People use their imagination other ways. Anyway, this one here is my corneal. Not only can you use it in worms like I showed you, it actually has three purposes. Because you could also use it as a whole lot faster chenille. And the third one, Look at that. You get a whole nother legging for micro or smaller patterns. I've got another one wider that I'd make up that I've dyed. Someone had out in a single color. They didn't even dye it. So here it is. That's pretty much on that. Now when you start getting into your newer ones, I saw on a fly fishing forum that banned me. <laughs> I won't name it, but it's in a western state. Anyway, they wanted to know what it was. It's shredded material, multi-layered. They can get up to a hundred layers in real thin stuff. Now it all depends on how you're using an imagination. You look at the Fly Tie magazine that came out this last year. I won't mention the name of it. They had nothing new. Little guys like me come out with new stuff. But like old field and every other industry, it's really not who you know, it's who you blow. Oh, another one I had, you can see in the videos right here, I'm running out of time. Pearlescent, iridescent, black eyes. So just about everything comes from the craft industry. Have fun fishing. Bye.